Raw kicks off with Jey Uso coming through the crowd. We learned at Payback that Cody Rhodes had got Jey drafted to Raw. Michael Cole mentions Cody used to be an EVP so he can get these things done and a nod to AEW. Jey says although he was only gone a few weeks he missed the fans and that his family pushed him to his breaking point but he's happy to be main event Jey Uso on Monday nights. He is interrupted by Sami Zayn as years of storytelling rush back to you seeing these two share a ring again. Sammy says he is happy Jay is here, independent and on his own two feet, and happy that he broke free from the bloodline. Sammy extends his arm out for a handshake, but Jay doesn't take it. As Sammy goes to leave, Jay calls him back, saying that wasn't very use of him, and offers Sammy the handshake back. Sammy ignores that and just hugs his brother in such an emotional moment. It was the perfect reunion with these two, they've got such great chemistry and I want to see them together more. As they leave, Drew McIntyre comes out and goes face to face with Jay, obviously still holding a grudge from last year. His partner Riddle does the same, as both of them have history with the bloodline. They are in action against the Viking Raiders, it's Tornado Tag. Kofi Kingston tries to help the faces win, but he ends up hitting Riddle with the Trouble in Paradise and being launched into Drew as the Raiders Ragnarok Riddle threw a table for the win. Seth Rollins is here after his win at Payback over Shinsuke Nakamura for a promo. He says Shinsuke pushed him to his limits but he is still the world champion, however something did not sit right with Seth. He reveals that he was pushed out of Payback in a wheelchair by his wife Becky Lynch while Shinsuke walked out and Seth doesn't like that. Nakamura comes out and Seth challenges him to a rematch for the title but Shinsuke says no. Bro, he was offering a title shot, why did you not just take it? You might win. Seth gets frustrated and honestly so am I so he attacks Shinsuke and they get pulled apart but Naka is able to hurt Seth's injured back again. Ricochet comes out to help Seth for whatever reason but he gets pulled away from Naka too. This sets up Ricochet versus Nakamura which ends in a DQ when Shinsuke hits Trevor with a chair. He wraps it round his neck and looks like he's going to Kinshasa Ricochet but Seth Rollins runs down to save Ricochet. He and Naka brawl and security try to stop them but Seth throws them out of the ring and Topes on to Naka. Shinsuke pushes Seth back first into the steel steps but before he can do more damage, Ricochet chases off Shin with a chair. Damien Priest and Rhea Ripley were watching on backstage but they both agree that tonight is not the night to cash in the money in the bank although Seth is looking vulnerable. Speaking of Damien and Rhea, Judgment Day are here sporting the undisputed tag titles that they won at Payback. They celebrate what they all achieved at Payback with Rhea beating Raquel Rodriguez and Finn and Damien beating Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Finn is of course now a Grand Slam champion too. JD McDonough comes out with something under a black cloth, careful we know his dodgy history. He tells Priest to get rid of the Money in the Bank briefcase, which Priest of course disagrees with, but offers him a new custom Money in the Bank briefcase. It's purple and says Senor Money in the Bank on it, it's very nice. They get interrupted by Sami Zayn, who first challenged Dom to a match, but JD offers to fight Sami instead, a move that impresses Priest. The Miz is here for Miz TV, he says he was robbed at payback, but his guest tonight can offer an explanation for it as he brings out John Cena. The joke is that you can't see him as nobody comes out, but the camera acts like someone is there. How do I even explain this and make a video on it? Cena isn't there, but we're pretending that he is. Miz cuts a passionate promo to the Invisible Cena before somehow things get physical. Miz was brilliant here, selling a push from the Invisible Cena and hitting it with a skull-crushing finale. He reiterates he will end the LA Knight hype train and challenges him to a rematch without a guest referee, as was originally intended. I mean, Miz was technically screwed, so this all really makes sense. Sami Zayn vs JD McDonough is next. Sami looks for the Haluva kick, but Dirty Dom pulls JD off. I mean, pulls JD out to save him. Sami goes after Dom and smashes him off the announce table, but when he gets back in the ring, he gets rolled up by JD for the win. After the match, Sami gets his hands on Dom, but JD repays the favour and saves Dom from a beating, telling him to run away. Dom does run away, as Sami gets his Haluva kick on JD to end the segment. In the main event, Chad Gable challenges Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. Gunther hits a power bomb, but Gable kicks out at two. Gable gets the ankle lock on, but he can't quite get the submission. Gable nails Chaos Theory for a near fall. I think it's one of the best moves in wrestling. Gable looks for a moonsault. Gunther gets his feet up, but Gable transitions to the ankle lock again. This time, great vining the leg, but still can't quite find the win. Gunther counters into a sleeper hold suplex that almost kills Gable, that was nasty, and follows up with a powerbomb and a lariat for the win. Gunther retains and ensures he will become the longest reigning intercontinental champion of all time. What a run he's on, and who knows when it will end. Gable's family were crying after he lost, and I love Gable, but there's nothing I love more than children crying at sports slash wrestling results. My personal favourite is when a football team is getting relegated and they cut to a kid in tears. It's ecstasy, honest to God. Thank you so much for watching my Raw review this week please like subscribe and leave your comments let me know what you liked about the show what you didn't like about the show and what you think that i can do to improve hopefully you'll stick around and i'll see y'all next time